Easter Island is a beautiful island filled with mystery and magic. It is most famous for its hundreds of giant stone heads that dot the island landscape. For centuries, everyone, historians, geologists, archaeologists and scientists have been fascinated by these statues. Let's explore this intriguing place. Easter Island is a special territory of Chile. The island is administered as a town of Chile and governed by a mayor and a six-member council. It is a volcanic island located in the South Pacific Ocean over 3,700 kilometers away from continental Chile. That's about five-hour flight just to get there. It is one of the world's most isolated inhabited islands. Its closest inhabited neighbor is Pecan Island with about 50 people and 2,000 kilometers away. So no other people for 2,000 kilometers. The island's popular name was given by its first recorded European visitor, a Dutch explorer, Jacob Roggeveen, because he came upon the island on Easter Sunday, 1722. However, the Polynesian name for the island is Rapa Nui. Do you want to know more about this fascinating island and these figures? Keep on watching. These are called Moai, monolithic human figures. Based on the archaeological evidence, these were carved somewhere between 13th and 16th century by Rapa Nui people. Almost all the Moai have overly large head and defined torso but no legs. Carving 900 huge statues alone is remarkable for the time, but transporting them to final position as far as 18 kilometers away from the quarry is impossible to imagine. The tallest Moai erected is called Paro. It is almost 38 feet tall and weighed 82 tons. One unfinished one still in the quarry, if completed, that would be 65 feet tall and weighed about 165 tons. These figures were carved with purpose. For the people who carved them and erected them, they were actual vessel for the spirit of king and upper class people. The Moai were made in likeness of the people who once lived. Once they pass on, these Moai represent them on earth. They move to their final spot and all of these statues face inward away from the coastline which means they stand to for protection of everyone on the island it is really fascinating and intriguing how they transported these statues to a final resting spot the scientists have tried to recreate how they would have done about 700 years ago i can believe the tenacity and ingenuity of the people they walked the statue, tied the rope in Moi's head, and people pulled the rope to walk the statue. Fascinating, isn't it? National Geography has a video on how they transported this Moi. I'll put the link in the description so you can watch it when you're done with this video. Very cool, isn't it? Let's learn about this island and its history a little bit. The island is small triangular land about 25 kilometers by 12 kilometers at its widest point. Area 163 square kilometers. But it is bigger than Liechtenstein, San Marino, Tuvulu, Nehru, Monaco and Holy See, the Vatican City. So not too small. Highest point of the island is about 500 meters above sea level. The island has three freshwater crater lakes, but no rivers. Currently, about 8,000 people call this island their home. About two thirds of them are indigenous Rapa Nui people, and the other third is mainland Chileans. Non-residents can only stay in the island for 30 days, no more. The Easter Island's traditional language is Rapa Nui. It's an Eastern Polynesian language. It shares some similarities with Hawaiian. However, the official language is Spanish. It is the only territory in Polynesia where Spanish is the official language. One of the most popular festival is Tapti. It is held during the first two weeks of February with traditional activities like wood carving and music and parade. Music played on an unique eight string flat ukuleles like this. The island split into two teams during the festival. Both teams are led by a queen. 
the winning team's queen is crowned as a queen of the island for the rest of the year. The whole festival is a fantastic event and a wonderful time of the year to visit this extraordinary island. There isn't much information about how human arrived on this remote island, but based on toll stories, the island was first settled by two canoe expedition from Polynesian island. Timing is also not clear. Recent studies suggest that it could be around the early 12th centuries, around the time when Hawaii was settled, but some also believe that it could be as early as the 3rd century. There is also a theory that people may have come from South America based on the agricultural method, particularly the sweet potatoes. The Rapa Nui population thrived until the 16th century. Then the island population declined due to many reasons. Famine is one of them because of overuse of natural resources such as forestation and overfishing and also war between the different um, tribal people in there. Then the slave riders also captured some natives to work in Peru. The Dutch explorer Jacob Ragavin's expedition in 1722 gave us the first description of the islanders. He noted that the natives were generally bigger with skin tone ranging from white to yellow to brown to black. At the time, he estimated the island population is around 3,000, but the archaeologists now estimate the population may have been around 12,000. Many other European expeditions visited these islands since then, but none of them claim the island or colonize it. It is so remote. Jane Baptiste Dutro Bonnier set up the island residence in 1867. He ran the island as a sheep ranch. He slaved the natives and ran the island for several years. During his time, native population declined to just 115. He was not a good guy. After his death in 1878, Alexander Salmon Jr., son of an English merchant, ran the island for a decade. He encouraged the Rapa Nui people to return to the island and he promoted their art and creativity and the, their artwork thrive to this day. It was an era of peace and recovery. He's a good guy. Easter Island was annexed by Chile on September 9, 1888 by means of Treaty of Annexation of the island that signed by the Chilean government and the Rapa Nui people. In 1966, Rapa Nui were given the Chile's citizenship. The island economy is a mix of agriculture, fishing, government services, transportation and tourism. The island art is a very popular commodity. Lots of art are being produced and sold by its residents replicating the landscape and the Moai sculptures. Chilean government sent about 2 million annually to help local economy and maintain the local government. There are lots of archaeological studies are taking place in the island. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. About 6,000 people visit the island each year. Not too bad for one of the most remote islands, right? The island is truly a unique cultural phenomenon. Thank you. Hope you learned something new. If you did, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.